After a sudden rousing roundup of skills, shills, and a couple headache pills, the initial dive into the triple feature spotlight is behind us, everyone. After almost a full month of absolutely nothing on this channel, but it seems to me that we're only just getting started, as Clay has gone and not only released two hotfixes already, but have gone and done something we've rarely seen before, communicated. No, seriously, who are you, and what have you done with the real Clay Entertainment of old, as I say keep them locked away and keep doing this. But I digress. What exactly is this, you ask? Well, it's another changelog, sure. However, it's also their plan for the future of this update. And for Wendy, that seems to entail haunting commands for Abigail, if not a couple more, faster evil flower mechanics at gravestones, elixir buffs and even storage containers, and plenty more. To continue, though, Walter's upcoming plans sound a little more straightforward in that they want to make a wobby training more straightforward itself make a big wobby compete with beefalo i suppose and have the quote unquote special attack actually be special but finally they want to give more incentive to being either naughty or nice overall when it comes to us playing our interdimensional imp simplify his nab sack skills or just get rid of some entirely by the sounds of it and lastly rework his neutral pan flute abilities to either completely get rid of them too or just make them actually worth it. It's all nice to look forward to, but what about the actual now? It's a good question, as we do have hotfix changes to get to. And the now is a lot and a little all at the same time. And we start with speed. Soul speed. Wartox's lifted spirit skill now gives him a slightly faster movement boost following a soul jump. So take advantage. Just as long as you have a soul echo, of course. But next up is his Lightbringer 2 skill that has changed the no longer having our revived friends return with a maximum health penalty if they have been revived by the new Twin Tailed Hearts. And lastly, all soul damage has been increased, so expect at least 25 damage per soul for the time being. But here's the thing, folks, that is truly just the beginning, as Wartox now no longer needs his soul jars to be filled with souls in order to gain the benefits of his greed collecting, and this is going to alter a lot of his skill tree moving forward. Number one, 12 soul jars maximum is going to lead to a total of 80 souls within the inventory due to each jar now giving us five extra souls to hold per. Number two, the maximum amount of damage per soul with this in mind seems to cap at 31. However, note that I am also not using his repel skill, which could potentially double that. Number three, nab sacks cap at 68 damage as their planar mechanics no longer exist overall, and all soul tweaks cap at 100 souls stored, be them in jars or not, which is why this calculation is what it is. And number Number four, since nab sacks no longer control damage output here, soul decoys now deal more damage per soul stored, up to roughly 63 damage it seems. To continue though, nab sacks themselves got a range increase when collecting stuff to make it more efficient and feel a little better. Wartox's Lunar Swindler skill turns both bright shade armor and helmets into full-blown bone armor counterparts essentially, just as long as you have a soul that that is. His Shadow Harvester affinity is now better suited to direct the double damage towards a single target over still attempting to distribute it to multiple even when there's nothing else around. And finally, it would appear that the Pan Flute buff that allows Wartox to use it without their ability loss simply lasts longer so you have a chance to use it if it's not in your inventory at that time. It's not spectacular, but hey, Clay knows this and is working on it. And once again, I must reiterate this. It is now the souls that we have within our inventory, be them in a jar or not, that contributes to all damage calculations from here on out. Make notes. But I promise you, Wartox is not the only guy getting worked on. They have already tweaked all sorts of things related to our favorite Ghastly Sisters here, starting with their Blessed Cistern 3 skill. This is the one that lets Abigail chill at a cistern for a time to increase her maximum health, only now instead of a mere 100 point increase, it is a 300 point swing, meaning a max level Abigail now boasts 900 health overall. To continue though, 
play as a Justin Wendy's Affinity Elixirs to use post-rift materials in their craft over pre-rift nonsense, while also changing both their effects overall. Luminous Wrath gives Abigail planar damage, as we know, but apply it to Gestalt Abigail specifically, and it skyrockets her already built-in 50 planar damage to a whopping 100 overall, meaning she will deal 500 damage to most mobs in this game, and that's before they're even shadow aligned. Oh yes, it's kind of crazy. But moving on though, comes the murder of all things, which is meant to give Abigail temporary planar defense on top of what she already has and a damage multiplier. However, it crashes the game when its duration ends for the time being, so we'll have to take a deeper dive at it later. But speaking of, all allegiances give Abby 15 planar defense now over the original and abysmal five. And lastly, her Dark Petals 1 perk now comes with a fresh refinement for Dark Dark petals, as well as the normal guys, as you can see. Have fun. As believe it or not, we're nearly done, everyone. As Walter really doesn't have much to share today, but I still think it's all worth our care. His Wabi training skills are super condensed now, so it's only going to be the level 2 training skills that are going to need any of the extra insight we would choose to spend on them. But to go along with this, only 4 Wabi training badges can be activated at one time over the original 6, so there's a trade-off. To continue though, Ammo Crafting only needs 4 combined skills to unlock itself to help with some player choice within this skill tree, and lastly, his charge large slash special attacks have not only gotten faster projectiles overall, but can be used while mounted. Enjoy. As there you have it, folks. The first major update to the update, with an even bigger one on the horizon by the sounds of it. Personally, I'm going to withhold true judgment until then, as their outlines in hotfix number two there actually look pretty promising enough to give them the benefit of the doubt. Please continue to share whatever bits of information you find that might be missing from either of these guides, as it helps us all as the beta rolls along. Thanks for watching. Well, wish to all. Let's be ready to shine the spotlight on Clay if they do happen to do some stupid Clay things. But I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.